Hello pilots and ground crew, welcome back to my channel again. Well, uh, not long ago I posted a troubleshoot and it had to do with the adjustments tab in Betaflight. Since then I've been asked to make a video about it. Right, what does it do? Well, the adjustments tab does a hell of a lot of stuff. And if I told you everything, this video would be about 18 hours long. Right, because you can adjust your, 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 your pids your roll rates, your throttles, your LEDs, your on-screen display, your expo, you can adjust loads of different things. You can set up uh, two switches. So you flick one switch which turns it on and then you've got a three position switch whereas if you push up on it your P gain will go up and if you push down on it your P gain will go down. You can do that for your PIDs uh, and there's lots of different things you can do with it. However, right, the most important thing is you can set your adjustments tab up with any any transmitter you want, any one you want, right? Doesn't matter which transmitter you're using, right, it will work. But your transmitter must be set up correctly. If your transmitter, your switches, is not set up correctly, then you're gonna have problems. So whatever transmitter you're using, make sure your switches are set up correctly. Now, going on to the adjustments tab, I'm just going to show you how to set up two things so you get the idea about what it does right, and how to use it. Right? The first one I'm going to show you is the on-screen display setup. So that you've got your on-screen display in your goggles or whatever, you, you know, your battery, your timer, whatever you've got going on. Right? Um, if you flick a switch, it vanishes. Okay, so if you're recording DVR, right to show on youtube right you can show a full dvr video without any of the other bits and pieces and stuff and i flick the switch again it'll come back but uh, so i'm going to show you how to do that that is really easy by the way all right and also i'm going to show you how to set up a rate profile so that you can have three rates or two if you're only using a two position switch but uh, i'm going to show you with a three uh, three rate profiles so for argument's sake, uh, you can, you're in acro mode, you're flying along, and just for argument's sake, you've got your super rates at, say, 10, right? So your quad's hardly moving, you know what I mean? So then you can flick a switch, and it can jump up to whatever, 50. Flick the switch all the way, and you can jump up to 100, right? But also, it's not just your super rates, it can be your expo, it can be this, it can be that. It, it's a complete rate profile adjustment, right? And you can have three up to three rate profiles on one switch. However, if you're using the new Jumper T16, that's got a six position switch, so you can have six rate profiles. But uh, I think you forget in your head what the hell you were doing then. So, anyhow, that's what we're going to talk about, and that's what we're going to get on with. So, let's jump onto the computer and we'll start off with uh, the on screen display. Now, when we get to the rate profile, pay attention, right, especially new pilots, because it will not work on every quad. Right, yeah, rate profiles will not work on every quad, but I'll talk more about that when we get to it. Okay, then, let's deal with the on screen display first to the computer. Right then pilots, we've got a quad plugged in and uh, just to start off with I'm going over to the uh, radio tab just to show you which aux channel I'm going to be using. Right, I'm going to be using aux channel 4, one in the middle you can see moving. Now it's a three position switch right, and I've chosen that on purpose which uh, the purpose will become relevant later on. Okay, right. Don't want to get confusing, so let's jump straight into it. Let's go over to the on-screen display first of all, and this is how to set up your adjustments in here. Now, people ask all the time, right? What? Why is the three dots here to tick? Right? Well, it represents three different profiles here. Right? For argument's sake, as you see here, hopefully you can see, on some of these, the middle dot is I have not ticked. Alright, now the reason why I haven't done that is so that if I t go to profile 2, which represents this middle element here, alright, you'll see everything on the on-screen display vanishes. 
right now you can pick any one of these it doesn't matter but whichever one you're using that represents the position of your switch right so that would be like in the low middle and high position right one two three so it doesn't matter which one you're using right but that's what it's for like now if I go over to profile 3 everything will come back again so that's what you have to do choose a box that you want to be blank okay right you might only want the first one ticked and you might not want any of these ticked which we can get rid of now right you might not want any of these boxes ticked at all and you just want the first one so you can just see what's going on on the first screen so this go back to profile one and I've got everything there now we're going to go over to the adjustments tab and set it up so that you can just flick a switch and it'll jump over to profile two or three we'll use two for argument's sake where the screen's blank and as I said the reason for doing that is if you're recording DVR footage on your tiny whoop shall we say you might not want all your stuff all over the screen when you post it to YouTube and there is another reason if you built yourself a big quad or plane or whatever and you're planning on going long long range right a few miles right you might not you're gonna have first of all you're gonna have loads of extra information on here you're gonna have your GPS you're gonna you're gonna have all sorts of stuff on here if you're gonna be flying long range right and you might not want that in your screen constantly as you're flying in your goggles so being able to flick a switch and get rid of it all in one go is very helpful right so I said it's simple to do so let's jump over to the adjustments tab and get on with it oh I'm just gonna double check my channel it was ox4 wanna yeah ox4 you need to make sure you know which switch you're gonna use now all you do is select your box right enable sorry enable your box up here select your channel and we've just double checked it was ox4 now over on this side you also want ox4 all right I'll come back to that later all right now here this is where you select what you want to do and as I said there are lots of different adjustments you can make all right I'm not going to confuse you and go through it all plug your quad in enable just one and have a look down and read through it and you might be able to pick some that you want to use yourself you'll figure it out just read your wiki page and uh, get the information but we want the on-screen display profile <clears throat> now if you remember over here right we kept come on we only ticked box one so box two and three right will be empty right so we're going to select oh I forgot to save it always click save all right just go through all that again it'll only take a second right it'll be a slot one represents position one on your switch well we want it in slot two okay and save your slider bar right now slot two on your slider bar is there in the middle right so you would think you would put the slider bar somewhere like that so that uh, it activates in the middle well strangely enough and please don't ask me why because I have no bloody idea on your on-screen display switch you enable the entire range right the entire range of uh, that bar so it doesn't matter where your switch is but it will only work when you're in slot 2 position 2 on your switch okay and that's it that's all you have to do right you you turn it on you enable it you select your switch your aux channel your corresponding aux channel right select your OSD profile select whichever position of the switch you're having it on right it's optional and make sure on your on-screen display right whichever one like we've gone for number two slot two so whichever one you're not going you don't want it ticked so that when it automatically switches over when you flick your switch your on-screen display will vanish right now I cannot show you that on beta flight so what I've done is I've done a quick little uh, 20 second odd video 
just to show you that actually working through DVR through my goggles flicking the switch on and off just to see it come and go right so let's just jump over to that quick little video and I'll come back and we'll uh, talk more about the adjustments tab and doing rate profile adjustments here I was then, just a quick uh, few seconds, you can see when you hit the switch the on-screen display vanishes and when you hit the switch again the on-screen display comes back, which is great so that when you're flying your entire DVR footage hasn't got the on-screen display on, half the time I forget to hit the switch. Anyhow you get the gist of it and I'm losing the plot now. Well there you go then, that's how you do the on-screen display to switch it on and off. Very simple, not complicated at all and quite useful in some situations. Okay, moving on to the rate profiles. Now uh, I've started off here because what I've done is I've set up rate profile 1 and this is just so you can see the changes when I show you later on. I've set the super rates here to 0, right? rate profile 2 I've set the super rates to 50 and rate profile 3 I've set the super rates to 80 you could have altered anything else right you could change your exposure out like that but I didn't want to get confused and it's just so you can see the actual changes happen in real life so to speak right so uh, let's start off with uh, let's go over again to the radio channel because it's always best to double check even though I know it's aux4 and we are going to set up a profile a three position rate profile on aux4 so I'll be using all four switches all three switch <laughs> the three position switch up oh, bloody hell take your tablets George right first thing I'm gonna do is remove that that's the on-screen display save just flick on somewhere else and come back again so it's all blank all right i'm going to show you at the end how to add the on-screen display and the rate profile together but i didn't want to do it at the beginning here because it'd get confusing right so we're setting up a three position switch so you've got three different rate profiles so we'll need three of these bars enabled You'll need to be on aux channel 4 because we know that's our three position switch in my case obviously yours could be different over here right we want aux channel 4 again now before you ask why is there a via why do you have to match these up uh, I mentioned you can set up your PID so you can flick a switch and sort of like increase your P gain or lower your P gain or whatever well you'd have two switches then right you'd have one switch which turns on the function and then you'd have another switch which actually activates the function but I don't want to get confusing we're just keeping this simple and we're doing it for the rate profiles so you come to your drop down box right and select your rate profiles right you can actually see here I think I've already shown you you've got loads of different options but select uh, I've lost it now <laughs> there it is rate profile selection and on the second one we obviously want the same rate profile selection and believe it or not we're selecting rate profile selection for the third one now your slots as I've said represent the position of your switch so we'll have switch one and switch two and switch three okay now here this is a bit that's quite important right we're gonna have these in different different areas of uh, the slider so that when you flick your switch it moves into the corresponding area however right and this is an important bit they have to be the same size they have to overlap you'll see what I mean when I say that what I find is just between 12 and 14 so 1300 if you put them on 1300 all right all three of them to start off with all right move the bottom one to the end and then line up the middle one just bang on so that the bars here and here are lined up so there's no gaps at all right this isn't like there 
like where there's a big gap in the middle so there's no gaps at all that is very important if you don't do that I'm just going to save while I remember if you don't do that it will not work all right well that's it that's all you have to do all right that really is it if I go back over to my rates which I'd already set my rate profiles up however I wanted them at the beginning so that's up to you all right now if you notice my mouse my little cursor here all right you can't see my mouse but you can see the cursor. I'm just going to leave it there all right just next to where it says rate profile and I'm going over to the transmitter now now if you notice my super rates I actually pointed at the screen then oh my god I actually pointed at the frigging screen with my finger if you notice my super rates are on zero which we said on rate profile one but if I flick my switch we've jumped to rate profile two automatically where my super rates now are seeing 50 flick the switch to position three and we've jumped to rate profile three and my super rates are on 80 you can see the changes up here as well as you see it's on rate profile three down to two down to one as i hit my switch and like i said it really is that simple to set up a three position switch your rate profiles now i did mention it doesn't always work now i have found right please don't ask me why i honestly do not know I have found this will not work right on a tiny whoop right so if it's a single board right you know what I mean with your ESC with everything built in flight control board with everything built in it will not work right now maybe it will work for you right it could be a case of it all depends on which flight control board you're using however if you're using a separate flight control board like you would be on a standard micro or five inch build or whatever you've got your separate flight control boards all right this and i'm going to say should work because i have heard of people where they've set it up and it still don't bloody work all right now i can only assume because it works for me so i can only assume going all the way back to the beginning of the video the radio was not set up correctly all right so that's my assumption all right if it works for you great if it doesn't work for you double check your radio and make sure as well you haven't got any gaps here as i said please don't leave any gaps right because you might think oh yeah i like to keep these really small and tight so that when i flick my switch it's all nice and neat and everything which is fine unfortunately it won't bloody work right now someone's going to leave me a comment saying it does for me mm. <laughs> so make sure there's no gaps that's very very important and like i said it all depends on the flight control board uh, i've tried three different tiny whoops and none of them i can't get rate profile set up on but on tiny whoops it's not that important really okay then pilots and ground crew mess about with it play with it right start off with the on-screen if you've never touched the adjustments tab before do the on-screen display first it's the easiest one to set up right it's very useful and it looks cool when you flick a switch and everything vanishes in your goggles right and then move on to the rate profile one because that's quite simple too and then you can move on to your PIDs where you need two switches for up and down adjustments and stuff. But that will be in another video, right? If anyone's interested, depending on what the response to this video I get. Okay then, pilots and ground crew. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And, uh, well, cheers. <laughs>